What's up everyone, Thomas here, and welcome to episode three of the sound series. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the rectangular micro T. At first glance, it might look like a low watt lunchbox style amp, in which you definitely can use it that way. I do at home. However, it's actually a preamp, and the fact that you can slay power from a high wattage amp through the effects loop allows the micro T to enter a whole other realm of possibilities. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, please stick around because we are starting now. Based on the first gen Sun Model T preamp, the Micro T uses one EL84 and two 12AX7s. The power output is maximum 5 watts. It prefers the 8 ohm load, but can work on anything between 4 and 16 ohms without causing any problems. It doesn't have an internal effects loop, but if you're using it as a preamp, you can put effects between it and the power amp or whatever you're driving it from. I'll be using the same guitar from the last demo. This is my 97 Gibson SG Series 1. It has the stock 500T pickup in it. I did change the bridge and the tuners. It now has the clues and locking tuners and the Tone Pros roller bridge. Tunings we'll be using today are Drop B and C Sharp Standard. And also we'll be using that 70 Sure PE54D mic and the Warehouse Veteran 30. For the power amp, we'll be using a Crate Blue Voodoo 120H. And for pedals, just look at the bottom right hand of the screen. It will display which one's on and the settings. <laughs>
So as you could probably hear from the demo, the 120 watt definitely had more low end and had a fuller tone. But here you can actually see it. Mike hooked it up to an EOSIS Air EQ. And if you look on the left side, the 5 watt had a peak of around 26 hertz on the low end. And then on the right side is the 120 watt with a peak of around 18 hertz. So real quick, I want to talk about the settings that I used. Running the micro on 5 watts, I found that it actually had a lot of bass. So I turned the bass down to around 2. Run the mid-range at around 8.5. Run the treble at 2, and I run the presence at 8. And this is my Sun Model T, second gen. This is the amp that I use in Witch Pip. And these things are known for having a lot of punchy mid-range. And I've actually A-B'd these two amps together. And I found that running the micro on these settings and dialing in a good volume and then kind of dialing in the sun's volume according to the micros, I can actually get some very similar tones, which is awesome because I use the micro at home and I'm able to run the same pedal setup that I do in Witch Pit on the micro at home. And it's just made the writing process so much easier. And I live in a condo and over the last few years, it's been a real struggle trying to find a good amp that I could use at home. You know, because using a big 150 watt amp, you know, in an apartment type setting, it's just not going to work. So the micro has really solved all of my problems. So running the micro at 120 watts, I found that it actually lacked bass. So I had to turn the bass up to eight, turn the mids up to six, and then treble and presence stayed the same at two and eight. And the other thing this amp has is a built-in attenuator. And it basically just controls the uh, line out level, which is really cool. The last thing I want to talk about is portability. These amps are small and lightweight, and it got me thinking, you know, this might be the perfect amp for the traveling musician. Anyone playing shows abroad at these festivals, you know that they usually provide a back line, and in which most cases it's like a JCM 800 or a 6505 or a triple rectifier or something like that, which are all great amps, but, you know, if you're used to playing a pedal-based rig, they're really not going to work that great for you. Um, but those being newer amps, they all have effects loops. So you could easily bring this overseas, you know, put it in a suitcase, you know, bring your pedals over there, hook it up to the effects loop of one of those amps, and, uh, you know, have pretty close to the tone that you're used to using. And I thought that was really cool. Um, the other thing is, too, if you're in a band and you have a practice space or something and you want to save tube life on your vintage amp, Maybe get a cheaper amp with an effects loop, leave it at the space, and all you have to bring is the micro to practice and just save the, the vintage amp for shows and stuff like that. So it's a couple of scenarios I thought could be really useful uh, in using the micro. Well, that concludes today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll have Ned's info in the description. You can email him about building you one of these amps um, and any kind of questions you have about them, he'll be able to answer them for you. But yeah, that's it. That's the Micro T episode. Thank you all for watching.